FX Nation, what's up guys? Welcome back to another ForexU video and uh, as we continue the trading psychology series, uh, this will be the last uh, part of the video um, for the, the seminar with uh, Mark Douglas. So I really hope that you have gotten a lot of information guys um, from the last four videos uh, from the seminar with Mark Douglas. Um, please feel free to rewatch it again. I know it's a lot of work, but at the same time, this is definitely one of the most important aspects of trading. So if you really want to do this, guys, you, you just got to put in the work, um, and watch, you know, and watch the videos. That's it. Learn, uh, take notes and go over everything. So I really hope, uh, that you guys have enjoyed, uh, this particular series, uh, with Mark, uh, Douglas. Uh, if you guys can do me a favor, leave me a comment uh, on this video. Let me know what you liked about the series. Let me know what you didn't like. If you didn't like anything about the series. Uh, if you'd like to see any other videos like this or any other series like this, um, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to, to put it together. Um, but again, guys, this is the last video on trading uh, psychology with Mark Douglas. And, um, and yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into it. And here's Mark. Now that you understand that your technical methodology does not tell you what will happen next on a trade-by-trade -trade basis, in this section, I will take you through a step-by-step -step process that will integrate the principles of consistency as a functional part of your trading personality. Up to this point, we've talked about how we get into this mindset, about resolving to think in certain ways, but this is this is learning how to disconnect, in other words, learning how to circumvent that natural mechanism in our mind that automatically connects things, connects similar events, this now moment opportunity, this now moment event with something that's in our mind as a memory, if there's enough, you know, if there's enough similarity there, it'll, it'll it tap us into a state of mind that's identical to our memories as opposed to what might be available in the now moment, which may be very different than you know, may, very different than what we think that it is. I mean, that's where, you know, that's where we have relationship problems, communication problems. You know, it's like it's this, 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 this connect mechanism really does cause us a lot of problems. It really does. Because in many cases, a lot of the pain and heartache that we feel in our lives is not connected at all with what's really happening in that moment. But you wouldn't be able to convince ourselves, or no one would be able to convince us, or we wouldn't be able to convince ourselves that what we weren't experiencing in that moment wasn't real. Because what we were experiencing was the energy. It was the, the fear, the confidence, the dissatisfaction, the betrayal. You know, the, the energy of it is, is real that you can't say this is not what's happening. But the problem is that the interpretation of the information that tapped us into the state of mind and the connection that our mind automatically made from this mal moment to some memory in the past could be, like I said, completely erroneous. When you when you look at the, when you look at the very nature of the universe and the way it ex way it exists, there is no possible way that any moment could ever duplicate itself. No two moments are ever alike, ever, and could never be, because if you just look at it, if you look at physical reality, is constructed of atoms and molecules, and those atoms and molecules are in constant motion. They are in constant motion. For two moments. To ever duplicate themselves, it means that all the atoms of all the molecules would have to be in the exact same spot they were in some previous moment right now. And that ain't going to happen. So when you really get right down to it, every moment is really unique. Every moment in the environment is really unique. But our minds don't process information that way. Every moment in the market is genuinely and truly unique. But our minds don't process it that way. We have to train our minds to process it that way if we want to make ourselves the casino. If we want to put ourselves in the situation where we are the casino, then we've got to get our minds to process information in a different way. Richard had a comment that I thought was really good. We tend to associate with a winning trade or a losing trade that when we do suffer a loss, we tend to think of ourselves as a loser instead of that is just a trade that turned out a loss right and when we so uh, when we do get a winning trade we think well I'm a winner so you get caught up in the emotion of it instead of 
looking at it, that was a bad trade. This was a good trade. It has nothing to do with whether or not you're a winner or a loser. Richard, have you ever played the slots? No. Never? Well, oh, yes. Why couldn't you say that? Yes, no, be, go ahead. Uh, not anymore because no, I understand. No, 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 I didn't say, no. Did I say, have you ever played yes. the slots? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the tumblers didn't come up with a, any kind of a jackpot, did you think of yourself as a loser? No. Why? Because I know that the slot machine is rigged against me. <laughs> well, okay, but did you think there's any possibility of ever winning? Uh, uh, absolutely, because I did get some. But in other eventually words, ended up with an empty pocket. But in other words, you, you, you walked into it with a belief that on any particular time that you pushed the button that there was a random outcome. Correct. You knew that, right? And so therefore you didn't think of yourself as a loser. Correct. Not Have you ever thought of yourself as a loser when you had a losing trade? Yes. And what would be the reason? <laughs> Because I lost. No, because you didn't. Trade. Because you didn't believe that there was a random outcome, sure. right? If you believed, if someone told you from the very beginning that that whatever outcomes that you experienced from any methodology that you picked to define an edge were random, would you be thinking about this completely it, differently? It makes a big difference. Absolutely. Yeah. So, in other words, you wouldn't have the same emotional problems that that you might have with the kind of errors and and and, and everything else that goes along with trading with fear. If someone would have just said to you, you know what? There's a random outcome. That Even help. though it's a pattern and it doesn't make sense and it creates a paradox for our minds, we've got a pattern that produces a random outcome. If you believe that there was a random outcome, where would the emotions come from? They would go they would certainly diminish if not. Well they go wouldn't away. be I don't think they'd be anywhere at all, they would, would go they? Go away, yes. No, I'm saying if you just right from the very start, what would that's you right. have to associate with? If if it's a random outcome, then you know that you're not wrong, <laughs> right? Correct. So there wouldn't be anything to associate the outcome with any kind of interpretation that, that could end up causing you to feel some sort of emotional pain. You're right. All we're trying to do is get to that place now. Even though you've had all this backlog of experience telling you otherwise, that's where we want to get to. How are we going to get there? We're going to create an exercise. Remember the five-mile rule? Okay, we're going, to do, we're going to do the five-mile rule in a trading exercise. Why are we going to do the exercise? You remember, we have, to be, we have to have clarity of intent. What is our desire? Our desire is to become a consistently successful trader, one where I can, I can generate an income I can rely on. Okay? And so, we are going to actually trade for a new reason. We're going to stay focused in the process of trading as opposed to the outcome. The typical trader is obsessed with the outcome of a trade. The professional trader is focused in the process of trading and letting the outcomes take care of themselves. As a matter of fact, the best traders that I've ever encountered love the process of trading. The typical trader, on the other hand, either has no awareness of the actual process of trading or really doesn't like the process of trading, but they're addicted to or obsessed with the outcome. So you have to make up your mind, and everyone in this room, at some point in their lives, for some reason, has decided to make up their mind about something, and when you have, you got results. Everyone has, I know everyone has had that experience. You've made up your mind with so much desire, so much clarity of intent, and, and with, with absolute sincerity that you got the desired result. So I'm saying that if you make up your mind to trade for a new reason, the reason is the acquisition of skills as opposed to the outcome or how much money you're making, you will acquire those skills and then you'll find that the outcomes just take care of themselves. If you've paper traded or tested your methodology to the point where you have confidence that you have something that can generate consistent results, then you can do this exercise. If you haven't, then you're going to have to do that first. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to plan your trades. In other words, you're going to have to take your methodology 
and determine a given set of rigid variables because what we're going to do is set up a trading exercise with just a simple 25 trade or 20 trade sample size. In other words, what you're going to say is that I am willing to invest in the development of these skills, the skill of learning to trade without fear, learning to think in probabilities, because when you learn to think in probabilities, the fear will go away. And so what I essentially have to do is convince myself. I have to step into, purposefully step into an experience where I am convinced, where I literally convince myself that these principles are true. Now they sound true to you. They might resonate as the truth. But you have to keep in mind that you might have a backlog of, of, of any number of experiences that, that would support beliefs that would argue otherwise. Because I could say to you that if I set up or you set up an exercise where you said, okay, I've got a particular set of variables that when they appear in the market, that is my edge, and that my edge will produce, let's say, even 60% winning trades, and you don't even have to have 60%, you can have 50% and still make consistent money. As long as what you have to risk to find out if it works is, you know, a third or a half of what you normally get when the, when the trade does work in terms of profits. But if we set this exercise up so that, there are, that there's no wiggle room, there is no wiggle room. What I mean by wiggle room is that the variables, the criteria that you use are absolutely rigid, black and white. They either, they're either present or they are not. That's the only decision you have to make. Are the, in other words, if you do, it, you do it in terms of lights, whatever lights you're going to use, whatever time frame, the lights you're going to use in whatever time frame, they are either on or they're not. And if they're on, you are obligated to take the trade. And what you're going to say to yourself is that in this, whatever, whatever criteria or plan that you set up is I am not going to take just the next trade. I am going to take the next 20 trades. I'm going, you are committing yourself to taking the next 20 trades of the occurrence of your edge. You will know in advance, based on testing and paper trading, exactly the optimum amount that you have to risk. In other words, what your risk is on each trade. And it's not going to be a, vari it's not going to be a varied amount. It's going to be a, a, a specific amount, whether it's in terms of, of dollars or distance. It will be a specific amount so that you know exactly how much each trade is going to possibly, potentially could cost you. And it should really be set up as a rigid profit, uh, profit uh, potential too. In other words, I don't want you making subjective decisions just about how far, how far you're going to let the market go in your favor. So if you can, if you can get a set of variables, well, let's say you even two to one, or even one to half to one, one and a half to one, meaning that, that if I have to risk one point of something, even if it's, let's say, in stocks, if I have to risk a dollar to make that, that my, particular, my particular set of variables, my entry variables, will get me into a trade where if I risk a buck, I'll get $2 60% of the time, or 50% of the time. Then that's what you do. You do, do two to one. There are trading methodologies that can be even the opposite. You can even go two to one here, meaning you can risk two to get one, but in these cases, the trade has to be, the trade has to be 80 or 90 percent correct. You can do it any percentage as you want, as long as it is fixed. There is no wiggle, wiggle room. There is no subjective decision-making whatsoever. Am, am I really clear about this? There is no subjective decision making whatsoever. Go ahead. The big things in, in expectancy or in, in trading uh, with uh, risk reward ratio is is you don't know which trade is going to be the the winning trade. Correct. And uh, uh, typically, you you try to let your winning trade get stopped out on your winning trades. But what you're saying to us for this exercise is that we take a fixed stop. I understand the fixed risk, but the, a, a fixed essential profit stop. You know what, if you can set it up as, as a trailing stop, if you can set your trailing stops up where you're not making any kind of subjective decision, you can do that too. So if it you're matter as long as it's yes, If you're sophisticated enough to do that, then yes. Okay. 
Okay, most, uh, most traders in these situations are not. That's why I make it real easy. Okay, as long as, long as it's as long as you're not making any decisions. So in other words, what you're saying is that if the market goes X number of points in my favor, I move my, my trailing stop up to a certain percentage below where the market is right now. And you don't move that unless you get stopped out or it moves up another gradient or whatever. An, another, uh, well, uh, what am I thinking? Um, standard like deviation beyond. Whatever. Yeah, okay, whatever you're using, okay? Yeah, if you can, if you can, if you can do that, that's fine. I just want it. I just want all the variables, to, variables to be completely and absolutely fixed. Okay, and then you fixed all these variables, and so you say to yourself, "I'm going to take the next 20 trades, not just the next one, but the next 20, no matter what, no matter what." Now that means that you have to be prepared. Based on the amount that you have to risk, you have to be prepared to take 20 losses in a row. The likelihood of that happening are, is about as remote as getting 20 wins in a row. But the point is, is that the dollar value of the risk of each trade multiplied by 20, you have to be able to afford. So you've got to set it up that way. You've got to set it up so that you can afford the dollar value of the risk of taking 20 losing trades in a row. Because you're, so what you're saying to yourself, if taking the risk, if, if taking the 20 trades in a row, losing 20 trades in a row based on the amount of shares that you trade. So for an example, if, if, the, if the standard amount of shares that you trade would say that, you know, by, if I had lost 20 trades in a row based on how much I've got to risk, it's going to be $5,000. You say to yourself, you know what, I don't want to spend $5,000 on this. Then don't. But say, I'm willing, truly willing to spend, let's say, $1,000. Then set it up where the, the, the amount of contracts or shares that you trade correspond to adding each one up where it comes up to $1,000, even if it means just trading 10 shares at a time. Go down to a level where it's, you're completely comfortable with the dollar value. You have to be completely comfortable. And then, when you get an occurrence of your edge, put the trade on and see what happens. And if it turns out the winner be a winner, you think, oh, hey, yeah, Mark Douglas, hey, good, hey, this, this is all right, okay? Yeah, so this one turns out to be a winner, and maybe this one turns out to be a winner. And maybe, well, this one's a loser, you think, yeah, okay, I, I can handle that. And this one's a loser, uh-oh, and this one's a loser. Now we've got three losers in a row. I have rarely met a trader who doesn't have a problem with the next trade after three losers in a row. You, you made the commitment to take every single trade. When the next one comes up and your mind is screaming, no, it's a loser. Remember how our minds are wired to think? Our minds are wired to think that way, but that is not the truth. The truth is your methodology, the mathematical formula, does not know what the outcome of that trade is going to be, and neither do you. You've got to take it anyway. And see, and when these occurrences, when you, can, when you purposefully put yourself into a situation where you're confronting these conflicting beliefs, because that's what's rearing its head. This is any different than me saying, I want to go run, and then, and then, you know, well, after that program, or it's too cold, it's too hot, it's raining, whatever. It's the exact same thing. You put the trade on anyway, and it turns out to be a winner, you are you are convincing yourself that you don't know what's going to happen next. Because you created an experience that directly, that was, that directly contradicts what you thought was true. You actually created an experience that directly contradicts what you thought was true. And the more of these you run into and the more times you do it, all of a sudden, you're not thinking the old way anymore. You are truly and genuinely learning how to think in probabilities. You are integrating thinking in probabilities as a core part of your training personality. You may understand the nature of probabilities, but now you're being able to function from a probabilistic perspective. Because what you're going to do is you're going to do this exercise until you can do it flawlessly. 
you are going to do this exercise and you do the first one and if you don't execute your trades completely flawlessly, then do it again. Now, at the end of a sample size, if you don't like the outcome, if you don't like the results, meaning the amount of money that you made, or even lost for that matter, because that's possible, you don't like the bottom line, you can tweak your variables. You just can't do it in the middle of a sample size. If you want to change your variables at the end of a sample size, you're free to do it. You cannot do it in the middle of one. Cannot. Absolutely cannot. You will keep doing this exercise until when? What? What? Well, yes, but there's something else I want to get. Until when? When do you, when do you, how do you know that you're, how do you know you've arrived? How do you know you've actually arrived, that you've changed? That you can freely and easily put in the trade. That's right. You can just, there, there's no conflicting energy anymore. It doesn't occur to you to not do it. It doesn't even enter your brain. You don't even get the thought. You get a signal, you put on the trade. You get a signal, you put on the trade. It's like then, then it's who you are. You guys with me on this? You, you manage to actually work through all that conflicting energy and you've changed. You're a different person. Because the c competing and conflicted for conflicting thoughts don't even enter your consciousness. They're not there anymore. Because it's not who you are anymore. Any questions about this? Is this making sense to everybody? If you're really sincere about wanting to generate a consistent income, you'll do this exercise. And if you're not, you won't. And you might not be ready to, and that's all right. Whenever you're ready, you'll do it. But this will work. This will work. One second. Because you are actively stepping into an experience where your desire is to change the way that you think. Instead of avoiding the confrontation, you are actually embracing the confrontation. Big difference. You are embracing the confrontation. Because the more that you embrace it, the faster it dissipates. Go ahead. Can you speak a little bit about uh, the going from uh, paper trading to uh, real money? I, I know there's a difference, and you, you would you say you were trying a new strategy or something that you you were tweaking. You would do paper first, and what would you would you consider it? A, I mean, if you you would you look at each trade and, and if you executed it flawlessly, and and you say you generated money, and then you went to the to real money, how would you decide? Uh, I guess if you lost money, to answer my own question here, in other words, what would you expect the transition to be? Well, that's going to depend on the individual. One, you're always going to want to paper trade. If you've got a new set of variables that you're working with, you're always going to want to paper trade it to the point where you're confident that, that you've got, you can get good results. That doesn't mean that you can execute good results. It means that the potential is there. You want to know the potential is there, correct? Once you know that the potential is there, then you move... See, the paper trading part is only to find out what variables in the market work in relationship to, you know, like, like market movement in relationship to the formula, okay? Now we're working on our brain, okay? So that's, the, that's the first step. The second step is that, is that do I think in a way that's consistent that I can extract the maximum potential out of the methodology? That means executing flawlessly. So, so what you do is you set this exercise up in a way that what will dictate it is how much you're comfortable with, if you, how much you're comfortable with the dollar amount of losing every, tra every, every single trade. That's how you know how to set it up. That's really key. It really is. It means that if you have to trade one share, then, you know, if, if that's all you're comfortable with, with losing based on the dollar value of, of how much you have to risk on each trade, that's based on your analysis, by the way, then do it. 
do and then and then when you're count, when you can execute one share flawlessly over a sample size or one or two sample sizes then go to 10 shares and see how you do and if you can't do 10 shares comfortably and flawlessly go back to 5 you're just building skills if you stay if, if you get your mind out of out of the out of out of the money out of the outcome part and focus on building the skills once those skills are there you're going to make all the money you want That makes sense, doesn't it? Do this exercise and you won't believe how things will change. Until you actually change and it's just like it'll be... It'll be amazing. Do the exercise. So does anybody else have any questions about how how to set this exercise up? How long, how long are you going to do the exercise? If you set it up and do it, how long are you going to do it? What's the criteria? 20 trades. 20 I understand. 20 trades. How many 20 trade sample size or 25 trade sample size exercises are you going to do? No That's right. Until there's no conflicting and competing thoughts. Until you can do it flawlessly. <laughs> until you can do it. Until it's like just a part of who you are. It wouldn't occur to you not to do anything other than what your rules say. It just wouldn't even occur to you. It doesn't even doesn't even enter your brain. And I guarantee you, at that point, you will be thinking in probabilities. You will be trading without fear. You will be trading from a carefree state of mind. That's the payoff. You'll be thinking like a pro. So you want to resolve to focus your efforts on developing specific trading skills and consistent profits will naturally flow as a byproduct of the mastery of these skills. The most successful traders love the process of trading whereas a typical trader usually ignores the process because he's obsessively focused on the outcome. On these trades, you keep saying, uh, you know, do the process, and you totally, you do it perfectly, right? What are some of the pitfalls? I mean, when I trade, I don't really think that I'm doing too much wrong. So I'm curious what all can go wrong on a trade other than typing it in wrong. All the things that, like all the errors that I that I mentioned earlier, like you know, not predefining errors. If you're not doing stuff wrong, that's fine. You know, that's don't 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 more. <laughs> Don't, don't that stuff. Yeah, don't make it. Yeah, don't. If you're doing all right, then you're doing fine. Okay. I don't want to give you the impression that that there has to be anything more there. It's, you know. Okay. Resolve to commit the five fundamental truths about the nature of trading as core beliefs of your trading personality. Those five fundamental truths are: anything can happen. Is that true or not? Yes. Every moment is unique. Is that true? Yes. Okay, an edge is nothing more than an indication of a higher probability of one thing happening over another. Okay, is there a random distribution between wins and losses on any given set of variables that define an edge? Yes, absolutely. Do we need to know what's going to happen next to produce a consistent income? No. You see, so if you find yourself, as you're doing this exercise, you know, with conflicting and competing thoughts, pay attention to what you're thinking, pay attention to what you're about to do as a result of what you're thinking, and then refocus on what you want to believe. I want to believe that anything can happen, that there's a random distribution that I don't need to know, and just stay focused on, on these particular beliefs and do the best you can and keep on doing it until it just becomes a part of who you are. It sounds like a meditation. It's right. You're absolutely right. It's like a meditation. Your That's right. Your mantra. Put them up on your wall or by your computer screen. Because they're all true. Continually re- resolve to continually reinforce a belief in your ability to be a consistently successful trader by adopting the trader's creed. By the way, these two things are in the dis- are in trading in the zone. I, th- what I just th- the five fundamental truths in the trader's creed are both in trading in the zone. The trader's creed: I am a consistent winner. In other words, remember the belief that I put up that I am a runner. Remember that? I said when I, when I actually became a runner, that that belief compelled me to express myself in a way that was consistent with that belief? Well, what we want to do is install a belief that says, I am. 
A, consistent winner. And the subset beliefs that you have to have to make this true will automatically compel you to act or behave in a way that's consistent with that belief. Why are you a consistent winner? Because I objectively identify my edges. Objectively. Meaning no rationalizations, justifications, or building cases. I know what criteria defines my edge, and it's either present or it's not. I predefine the risk of every trade. Wouldn't even think about getting into a trade without doing that. Now, that doesn't mean, because who brought that up earlier? No, he's not here right now. That doesn't mean that I always put a stop in the market. But I trade subjectively. That doesn't mean I actually enter a stop. But I guarantee you that whatever price I picked as my risk point, I never violate not getting out at that price. The market hits my price, I get out. That doesn't mean I've entered a stop in the market beforehand. But I could do that. I don't have a problem with that. It wouldn't even occur to me not to do otherwise. I'm a consistent winner because I completely accept the risk or I'm willing to scale back or let go of the edge. Meaning I'm completely free of conflict about the amount of money I'm willing to spend to find out if this trade is going to work. If you're not completely sure, or let's say completely without conflict about the amount of money that it could take to find out if this trade is going to work, then scale back to a level that you're comfortable. But the important thing is participate. Even if you have to scale back again to, like I said, one share, at least you're participating at a level where you've got some money at risk. I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. I am a consistent winner because I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. I am a consistent winner because I continually monitor my susceptibility to making trading errors. And how do I do that? I keep journals. I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. I subscribe to a philosophy of scaling out of positions. I like to divide my position up into fractions and scale out in quarters or thirds. That way I'm continually making myself a winner. As the market makes money available, I'm extracting money out of the market because I don't know how far the market's going to go in my favor. And what I have is I usually have at least a quarter or a third on in case it just does something that, you know, I could have never anticipated. And by the time I've got just the last third on or last quarter on anyway, and, you know, I've got, a, I've got a trailing stop or, you know, at least a place in my mind where I get out if it, if it retraces back to, back to my, you know, not far beyond my entry point anyway that, from that point on. And the last one, I never violate these principles of success. Well, what do you think, guys? Any questions? Get them now. Go ahead. Do you ever scale in? No, I you know a lot of a lot of traders who do. I just I just don't. That's it. I don't. I'm not saying that because I don't doesn't mean that 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 I that I don't think it's fine. I just don't have a particular methodology where I scale in. That's all. I get in all at once. Anything else? Here's your chance to get on the DVD. Come on. <laughs> Don't miss out. <laughs> What's that? Never violate water. Uh, well, well, no, that, why? What do you mean? That, you think, 
Well, what do you, yeah, you don't have to. You can get to a. a, a you can get to a. Uh, go ahead. And never violate. That's a, the never is it that they said never say never. Well, you know, let's put it this way: you can you can at least aspire to never violate, to violate the principle. Yeah, that's good. But that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, you're making you're making a good point. You really are. I appreciate that. You can aspire to never violate these principles of success. Guys, one last thing. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate the fact that you take the time to watch my videos. I really hope that I've added value in each of the videos that I make for you guys, and I hope that you're learning something. As always, guys, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please like and share the videos if you found value in them. And also, don't forget to visit our website at www.fxn trading.com. Once again, guys, thank you so much. I'm truly blessed.